Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus. Hello. And everyone at home watching this live, how's everybody doing, man? Uh, this is the last show of 2020, 100%. Wow. So we hope. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tune in for December 35th. Yeah. We may yet eat these words. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Keep your pinky toes crossed that you don't wake up on December 32nd because <laughs> psychologically, the only thing you're going to do is go, all right, fine. Eh, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, surprisingly, we do have quite a little bit to cover this week. So uh, mm -hmm. stick around for that. Let's see what's going on because, you know, I've updated the um, streaming box that we use here in the studio to Debian uh, Bullseye, which is, you know, it's tracking testing right now. Much to the shock and surprise, it was like, oh, I thought, and I'm on Twitter, somebody was like, I thought you were running Debian. I'm like, who keeps track of what operating systems? <laughs> <laughs> the, like, I, I you just, were someone's justification for something and the moment you yes. posted that you lost that title I, and uh, they lost whatever backing they thought they had so yeah no <laughs> you ruined their day <laughs> i just remember seeing that notification on twitter and like really I did write back. I was like, yes, one of the five computers in the studio is running Debian testing now. <laughs> Shrug emoji. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Sorry. But um, now I get to play with the new stuff, you know, and I do have um, 416. XFC 416 has made it in. So I was really happy to see that. I'm like, oh, I get to play with that. Installed it, everything. I was like, that. that's basically just still XFC. Good job. But, no. Nice. We got the mm -hmm. fractional scaling, which um, on NVIDIA, if you're running an NVIDIA proprietary, that's just a good way to garble up your screen. But if you're on Intel or AMD, that's going to be a thing. And I don't like where that save button location is. We were talking about mm -hmm. that in the pre show. It's upper right hand yeah. corner for the save button. Title bar, yeah. GTK Weird. title bar. <laughs> Let's go ahead and relearn 30 years of muscle memory. <laughs> It's going to take a minute, but outside of that, um, yeah, that's pretty much, oh, I've been trying to track down a, um, RME HDSP 9632, a PCI sound card kids and people still want. Now, when I wasn't serious about tracking one, you can get them for like 190, 200 bucks. Now they're all like three, 400 bucks. So we're just going to wait that out. But I think that's going to be a fun interfacing Linux simply because that card is still made. You can buy a brand new one from RME. Nice. PCI. <laughs> like, huh. How about you, Jill? Did you get through the holidays in one piece? Yeah, I did. I ended up having a fun holiday, uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with my Steve husband. And that was nice. And one of my favorite things I got penguin related is this new mug. It's so cute. <laughs> It's got penguins making snowballs, making a snowman. <laughs> it's just really cute. And fishing <laughs> and giving presents. <laughs> Naturally, and you would be, yeah, hey, Pedro, how's it going? Pedro is checked out. <laughs> I have. It is basically the only holiday I've had in a significant degree since, you know, the whole lockdown happened mm -hmm. and it was basically me and two other people uh preparing provisioning uh, imaging doing everything and sending out laptops for one two three four different regions mm -hmm. three people yeah. so yeah no my brain has been deliberately shut down for and it will be shut down <laughs> as soon as we're done recording it will shut down again so if i start foaming at the mouth you know what happened <laughs> <laughs> You still you have a that Christmas break, decorations. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> eh, they're there. It's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's the season. That's why you got to leave that up with it eventually. You just got to get everything up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. Um, we're going to start off with um, an announcement from Rocky Linux. They have a community update, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, just going through. 
some of the stuff they have set up, you know, their timelines, their targeting Q2 of 2021, hopefully. And uh, that's when we can expect our first release for Rocky Linux. And they're in the process, you know, right now they're setting up the infrastructure and all that fun stuff. They were going to be using AWS as their build platform. All right. Um, and uh, lots of companies have stepped up to sponsor the project because I think they're like, you know what? That That's cheaper than actually paying Red Hat. Yep. <laughs> but um mm-hmm. it's just good news mm-hmm. I, I like seeing this and i i want to have um sent to us in a i i want a better more in shape version of sent as we learned last week you know um yeah, it was struggling a little bit you know the actual <laughs> project so that's good news i'm glad to see that man i pedro you you thought it was a l- little catty some oh, it, it, it is. It absolutely is. If you actually <laughs> read through the thing, it, the whole uh, like announcement is loaded with very thinly veiled pot shots at what happened <laughs> with CentOS and the acquisition of Red Hat by IBM and the perception that a lot of people have that IBM is now putting their fingers into the, the Red Hat thing, which they probably are, but thus far we haven't had any proof of that and yeah if um joel's interview was anything to go by they certainly had nothing to do with this uh but yeah no if you really do want to avoid streams like the plague it 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 would seem that rocky is very much the operating system for you to be checking out and if they do get uh infrastructure and everything else and or just straight up money like they say in the uh, sponsors bit they're very well on the way to becoming the choice distro for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's really cool is this the beauty of open source is when there is a need, there is a way. <laughs> so this is going to fill that CentOS need. And it will actually, I was thinking about it, it'll probably be the fastest major distro ever made. <laughs> <laughs> you know developed because of the <laughs> well that was an interesting yeah. i suggest everybody go back and watch the um chat we had with joel that was interesting to find out about like CentOS because a lot of people were really upset like it's supposed to be supported for you know like eight years or something like that that had nothing to do with red hat or anybody at sent that's just what somebody dropped on their wiki page at some point so <laughs> yeah when you like, Okay, so you might want to turn down your outrage a little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We learned a lot of things about um, what is going to be, you know, streams. And that's pretty cool. Let's go back and, like, read that because there's just so much. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have Joel on, just talk about so much of the um, FUD that's been spread around versus what it actually is. So, Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Neo Chat. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really cool. This is a NeoChat 1.0. It's a a KDE uh, matrix client um, just has been released. And uh, for those of you that don't know, matrix is an open network for decentralized communication and it's very secure and it's actually very similar to discord um, telegram and whatsapp. It's kind of a combination of lots of different messaging services. And I was just impressed uh, by how well laid out this client is. Um, And it works on KDE and Android. And it's just nice to have another Matrix client out there because, uh, for one, it's getting a lot of adoption in the Linux Linux community, including on um, the destination Linux that I'm involved in. We use Matrix. And Jupyter Broadcasting uses Matrix. So this is really good that there's growth. And um, I've actually been using the element.io app for Linux um, and Android and web for chatting for a while now. But I'm looking forward to, to really um, uh, seeing the progress of NeoChat. It's still not everything is in it yet. They don't have audio or video integration yet, um, but that is coming. But they have all the basic features that you know a chat application needs, like sending and responding to messages. You can invite users to a room, start private chat chats, and create new rooms and explore public rooms, just like you do on Discord. And it yeah. even has—I <laughs> was impressed. It even has a um, um, image editor 
editor, which is really cool. <laughs> So that's nice. I, just to, for trimming things on the fly, that that's very helpful. Discord gets then to learn a few things from that. Yes. But, uh, no. <laughs> I can't have that. No, one of the things that I, they mentioned is it comes pre-installed. Uh, if you bought yourself a Pine phone that comes with any of the uh, phone images that uh, have Plasma Mobile loaded, it comes installed by default. And... That's a very big thing, especially when we're dealing with decentralized stuff. It's always finding the client if, to hopefully get you access to everything you need in the one place because, yeah. yes, it's more secure, but at what cost? So, yeah, if it comes installed by default, uh, then people will have a much easier time just playing around with it. And if you got yourself a uh, Pine phone to play around with, why not give it a shot? I think one of the big mm -hmm. things about getting something in something like that is, A, people know it exists. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, Having it, that's a, yeah, good that's point. A yes. <laughs> but where are we at with this? When I think about, um, like, Matrix or anything like that, especially when I think about Discord or Telegram, I think about that's just a browser tab. For most people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, especially with element.io, that's what a lot of people use for the browser. I can see that. Um, yeah, I mean, personally, if I can do it in the browser, because nine times out of 13, it's going to be an electron something. What is this written in? Uh, QML and Kirigami, I think. Yeah, Kirigami, yeah. That was. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Go check it out. I've never, uh, I think the only time I've. I've tinkered with a few Matrix clients just to set up audio, video, stuff like that. And I still need some work, but um, it's a thing, man. And again, I like the fact that it's on um, Pine phones. So, yeah. Yeah. Out of the box. And, and it works on Android and it, it scales really nicely between all the different platforms, which is nice. That is good mm -hmm. to know. But let's keep rolling with the audio, video hype train. This one is, uh, well, this one nice. is an, an entire platform in and of itself. It's Nimbcast. It, uh, That's probably comes not the server. Be, well, we, I think we've mentioned this before, right? Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. or something very similar to it. <laughs> because <laughs> it's not the first one. Uh, not by a long shot. And something tells me it will, won't be the last. But yeah, Arthur had, uh, put this on the uh, show recommendations and I had a look through it and they say it's an alpha, but it seems to be, uh, according to the uh, tick boxes they have uh, in the features and status, it says that they've implemented all features, they haven't validated them yet, and they haven't quite, reaching, uh, they haven't quite reached the uh, beta testing phase. So it's still an alpha. Keep that in mind. Don't, you know, deploy an entire system no, Pedro, off of this I, and I, expect I'm, I'm, use. I, I'm nuking my Plex box right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, just don't. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, it is an alpha, but it comes, it already has the server, it has um, the client, there's a player, standalone player, there's an Android player. Basically, you can get everything you need to deploy this uh, to, say, a Raspberry Pi and have the Pi be the server that gets everything off the network, and then all of your clients connect to the Pi which uh, actually I am planning to set up a Pi to work as a uh, media box. It's just going to be plugged into the um, the sound bar with a little touch screen. If by the time I get around to actually doing it, this is already in beta testing, that might very well be what I end up using because yeah, it's, a, it's all there. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Maya Posh, the developer, um, she called Nymphcast a casual attempt at an open alternative to Chromecast and the like, like the Amazon uh, Fire Stick. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but we needed an uh, open source option in this space for sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is awesome. The only difference I can think about that is I think one of the big advantages with a Chromecast is you're not dealing with client server. Technically, your mm -hmm. Chrome browser where you're... Major, you remember that thing about semantics we were talking about earlier? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't have to deploy the server. I got what you were saying. <laughs> okay. I, I just, uh, um, not that I, I mean, I've picked up a Chromecast and I've probably used it a grand total of thrice. Like, oh, that's neat. But, you know, you live in area. But I guess if you wanted to, what was it? Jellyfin? Was that the other 
Focus. Yeah, Jellyfin is the open source. Uh, Plex, Plex. Yeah. Plex. Yeah. Plex. <laughs> so this looks like Player 3 has entered. Was and it? I, MB. MB. Okay, fine. Yeah, NB. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that. Uh, I've just... You know, I've powered down my Plex box. I've realized I don't. It was just like, oh, I like having it there. Do you use it? No, I do not. So, <laughs> I mean, it was just an addition to my power bill. And I mean, it's there if I ever need to cut it on and like pull it. But I don't archive stuff. You know? So go check that out. That's going to be in the show notes. Thank you, Darkwing. Yeah. Jellyfin <laughs> is the open source one. It's the, it's fork, the fork of MB. Yeah. Yes, there we go. So a little gaming news, kind of technically, if you wanted to get, you know, uh-huh. on that. It's a gaming platform Possibly. or was at one point. You got to think about this. Um, <laughs> Nintendo 64 It was a console. Um, it pains me to hear people call it. It's a retro console, which is I scream telling the child to get off my lawn. But there is now a port of Linux to it. Which is pretty neat. Um, dude who did this, he's like, hey man, having Linux available for the N64 makes it easier to port emulators and console games. And his reasoning for doing this was something I wholly support because I can. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is the best reason. <laughs> if well, you think yes. you can do something, do it. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that and he's like, oh, and now you can update the um, linuxmips.org wiki with the N64 and uh, you can edit that to no longer say vaporware. Um, and Jill, you said uh, it had oh, been done yes. a couple of times. It's like the reason he went it back has. and did it is because this is being pushed upstream. He's submitted it for inclusion. Nice. Yeah, so our very own Mr. Alert in chat got Linux running on a Nintendo 64 over just over four years ago after a lot of work building device drivers for it. And what was cool is he showed showed off a demo at a Scale 14X, the Southern California Linux Expo, and he, he demoed the N64 booting Linux. And then he got featured on the Linux Action Show because of it. And uh, so... Um, this is his uh, video of it running, and um, I know he was he he still had to work on getting it uh, small enough to boot, you know, in the memory of the N sixty four. So he was still working on it. <laughs> well, this is where things can genuinely get interesting with the N sixty four because that's using an old SGI um, silicon that they played around with. There's memory expansions. I, I wouldn't just like reading around. Some people have um, hacked up um, systems that have up to thirty two megabytes. Yeah. RAM <laughs> for the N64, and you can do some stuff with that much space. I don't know. It'll be fun to sit back and watch to see what comes of it. But yeah, there's a mm-hmm. N64 bootloader boot on GitHub. I mean, you can go play with it, I guess. That's so awesome. <laughs> yep. So uh, one of the things that I noticed was that they have, in fact, edited the Linux MIPS wiki page for the Nintendo 64. Okay. It doesn't say vaporware anymore. It's just a blank page now. <laughs> Ooh, progress. That's what I like to see. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so um, earlier this week, um, I, I finally had that moment of like, you need to learn enough about Rust so you can hack on it moment, and, <laughs> as every young boy does. And... Um, I run into something that we've definitely discussed on the shows is like something that has always irritated me. And it's always been a problem and it is still very much a problem to today is package naming different distributions. You're like, oh, I need, is this lib going to be this lib plus dev, this lib plus D E V E L, or is this going to be lib this lib mm-hmm. with dev? Mine? <laughs> Cause you know, I'm getting ready to go. Does it have a stuff. one at the end? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, or like a random EGL, like, lib, EGL, and so on and so forth. Oh, but we put a <laughs> dash three on the end of this one. Why? Because <laughs> we could. That's the real fragmentation of, in Linux right there. Mm-hmm. The package names. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. So doing what I'm sure a lot of you at home do is just that natural thing. I'm like, all right, let's just Google this lib followed by um, distribution. Distro, which is like yeah. right. <laughs> and I ran across this, Joe. 
Yeah, this is awesome. This is called Command Not Found, and it has so many wonderful uses. Um, you know, have you ever forgotten the cam commands to install a Linux program from the command line or, or just didn't know the commands for a new distro you are in? Well, the Command Not Found uh, search engine will definitely help you. All you have to do is type the name of any Linux app you need to install, or it can be a library, and then it will re return the command you need to install the app from the terminal for, for all the main uh, distros, uh, such as apt-get, pacman, dnf install, and I had used xterm or the gimp as examples. And what's really nice is it shows you, you know, all the command line um, functions you need to install on uh, that app on all the different distros. And it also gives a, de a brief description of the pro program you are looking for and what it does. So yeah, Vin just brought up the GIMP. If, so. if you install GIMP using <laughs> Docker, you're a lesser person than I am. <laughs> <laughs> that better be a very specialized use case, and you better have a rock solid reason for having done it. Otherwise, hey no. Pedro, Pedro, Vin said because I can's a valid reason, so I guess I guess give him a pass. <laughs> I mean, if you want to learn how to set up your own Docker profiles, absolutely. Yeah, very just nice. <laughs> get a Docker image up and ready so you can send it to someone and just have him load it up and it working. The GIMP is probably a very good um, app mm -hmm. to do it with. <laughs> this this was handy. It helped me track down. It was yeah. some ALSA application that was, you know, you run into the dreaded, oh, this is referred to by another package. Not error, mm. but that little hint when you go to install something, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh boy, and it helped me try. <laughs> they changed the name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, well, I was it... happy you found it, Vin, because I, I I just bookmarked it because that this is going to come in handy. <laughs> so I'm and glad you, you put it in the out. show notes. Yeah, it's command yeah. dash not dash found dot com, and um, <laughs> that that's a handy little resource. Um, but I want to talk about audio. And when I talk about audio, I'm talking about the latest and greatest technology. You might not have heard of it. It's called Firewire. Revolutionary. It's going to change, it's going to change computing latest. as a whole, man. It's brand new. It's just coming out. We're, we're going to see support for it. Um, but yeah, here's the thing, man. Um, one thing I've discovered when I started digging around is there's just tons of really high quality audio interfaces that people who basically have owned Macs have just ditched because Apple's like, okay, so your um, FireWire to 400 to 800 to Thunderbolt 1 to 2, then Thunderbolt 3 adapter might not work with the latest update. I'm like, okay, fine. So they're ditching these things. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, these are like, AD conversion was figured out about 2005, 2006, solid. Everything after that's marketing effectively. And so you can just get, you know, it's great pieces of equipment, but up until very recently, if you plugged it in, we, I've definitely talked about uh, FireWire audio devices being added into also recently, you know, in the past year or so. So you plug it in, it just shows up, pulse audio, and you're like, oh, I can just use it. And that typically would work, but you'd go to uh, like also Mixer, you wouldn't get anything. <laughs> like this device has no controls. Well, there's a project underway to fix that, and it's called Sound Firewire Control Services. It is a subset of the ULSA project, and tax working on it. And it's finally gotten to the point where I feel comfortable. I'm like, hey, if you just want to use one of these things as a sound card, like a stupid high end sound card, you can do it now. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw some of the things I was posting with just like the Apogee Duet for setting a bunch of things, and like you get access. The Apogee? The Apogee, the Apogee Duet, <laughs> baby. Apogee. Um, <laughs> now through also mixer i have access to like mixer control line level phantom power phase inversion all the stuff that you could previously only pull off with Fado mixer but now it's just like boop, hey it's there very happy to see that now it is 100 percent rust oh you'll never guess why it was played around with rust uh, <laughs> see if you can put 2 and 13 together on that um <laughs> this will eventually just find its way into also but i like stuff like that mainly mm -hmm. because i don't like stuff that I don't like perfectly functional equipment. You know, you might look at something from like 2005. I'm like, oh, that's retro. It's not retro if you can still use it and Correct, you can still yeah. do stuff with it. You know, it's not like, that's my classic computer. What can you do with it? Well, I cut it on and it goes beep. Like, can you do any work with it? Nope. Okay. Different story <laughs> with an audio <laughs> interface. Um, 
there's a bunch <laughs> of great stuff and there's PCIe firewire cards and you just plug it in, do the thing. And this is going to keep stuff like that out of landfills, which makes me happy, still usable. And there's an argument to be made. I'm like, oh, your, your Mac, you can't do your music production on your Mac anymore. Guess what? <laughs> I know. I, I happen to know an operating system where everything is alive and well. And just mm-hmm. plug it in and get going with it. So, yeah, go try that out if you have. Um, I think there's a total of what was seven of the most common chipsets are currently supported. So, about 40 devices are up and running with that. So, there you go. Ta da. Very nice. Any thoughts on <laughs> delegations? I'm like, I got yeah. sound card, I plug it and make noise. <laughs> well, I love much. that, you know. Um, <laughs> li- Linux is so good about supporting, you know, legacy hardware. And why not? You know, a lot of a lot of people have these in their older computers. I've got probably about fifteen different with, firewire uh, devices myself. <laughs> <laughs> Fire GL radions who aren't terribly happy with Linux right about now. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, ever well, since true. they dropped our one twenty eight, uh, it's yeah that it, you're basically stuck on the what was it five uh, four nineteen or five point mm, yeah, something was, really early five point yeah. version. Well, I mean, yeah. you could be run, just run, but your, you can use an older cr- kernel still. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, <laughs> I, I'll touch on that in the slice of pie section, but real quick, <laughs> another audio thing. This is real quick, though. I just want to throw this in for everyone. Um, if you have a Zoom H6, uh, somebody's made a Python library to simulate the uh, recorder remote control so you can control it from your computer. Guy was like, I'm doing the, um, because an H6 reasonably cheap device, relatively, I should say, and he wanted to be able to control it from his PC, and it, they're made to be portable. And he was like, you can do this real simple. You got to make a cable, you know, an FTD, ID, USB, TTL converter to pick up one of those, you know, just open your sock drawer. It'll be in there. 2.5 millimeter <laughs> jack screw terminal and the wire ups real simple. You do it, you plug it in mm-hmm. and you can have this set up to record like a modern, um, like control surface or anything like that. And it's pip install H6. It's stupid, simple, stupid, easy. And I understand like three people are like, awesome but that's all that's what i'm here for those three people <laughs> so now you know it's a thing go use it it's python it's real easy and um that'll save you from you know if you need to set it up in the middle of a room somewhere where you're not constantly getting up hit pause play record next shuffle and all that stuff you're doing it very nice yeah. it's very nice <laughs> so you know what else is nice <laughs> Uh, Our patrons. People who aren't us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jill is nice. Uh, I'll, I'll give her that. <laughs> Not everyone. Aww. People aspire to be as jaded and bitter as you, Pedro. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Someday with lots of work. <laughs> but no. Jill, you hit on it. All the beautiful people who are making this show possible over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Um, come join the team. Get some cool stuff. Get an extra show we do each and every week. Hop in our Discord and come say hello because that's where we're frolicking. The other six days. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. Um, that, we're here. We don't have a like separate like group chat. Just That's where all communications for everything go. And like 80, 82 people in there to come say hi to. And um, that's brilliant. We got a store if you want to get some LJC merch. That's uh, another thing we have. And Amazon wish list. Yeah, go see what Pedro wants this week. I'm sure it's... Uh, <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure it's the same as last week the week thing. before because yeah. I haven't added anything or removed anything. And Jill is in still the same. dire need. <laughs> dire need of stuff plushy. Yeah. Things. More penguin plushies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I also wanted to thank uh, Mir in chat for gifting me the game Windward from Steam. Thank you so much. Mir, He's I've been, been wanting to play Foxy that game. This week. <laughs> yes, yes, and I need to play with him. And I know uh, Pedro really enjoyed playing Windward as well. He can go back and watch his stream. I was they the only great. one who was nice to that game in the <laughs> chairs. Yes, so, in the chairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Let's talk <laughs> about PCIe. 
Mm, busy eye pie. Ah, it gets nice. a bit crunchy after a while. But uh, yeah, this one is a little project from uh, Jeff Geerling. And being, you know, stuck at home, uh, I assume, much like everyone else, is like, oh yeah, there was that uh, Raspberry Pi compute module and uh, the I.O. expansion board that you could just plug it into. It actually comes with a buy one uh, PCIe port on it. So he figured, you know what, let's uh, ask around if people have any stuff that I can borrow just to test. And he decided to create a website to track everything. And what immediately Maybe. jumped out at, uh, at me. The, yeah. Yeah. Well, this the, the box that we're doing this. I have two of these in the studio, man. 10 gig cards. Yeah. All right. And uh, the, the thing is right there down the side. So, oh buy there's just a thing to buy the card that you're currently looking at it's, thank you do you know how many other projects that i've seen about compatibility of stuff oh yeah <laughs> i used this and it worked uh i remember when i was looking around the um hackintosh forums oh yeah this uh the wi-fi uh, wi-fi card from intel works and this whatever it works can i have a link for that please <laughs> Yay. Was that so hard? Got all the links. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, looked at it's there. Uh, CD <laughs> earlier this week. There was a guy who used uh, plugged the Wi-Fi card into one, and he got pretty better speeds than the uh, wired mm. on the computer mo module. Yeah, I didn't see oh, that. Oh, very There's, nice. Mm. Yeah, it, it was that new fancy Wi-Fi that kind of gives you the brain worms. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, one of the things, like the very first card that he has on there um, is uh, the 750Ti yes. basic video card <laughs> if you want to play any kind of video games or if you want to have even the smallest amount of um, hardware acceleration with a decent GPU behind it, even for just regular home use. That's a very good card, actually, and mm -hmm. very cheap considering no one wants them anymore. Uh, so yeah. if that works... <laughs> I'll probably have to buy the um, Pi 4 compute module and the breakout board because, uh, Definitely. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Do you know I have every GPU on this list in my collection? <laughs> 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 Including the EVGA VGA 750 Ti and the Vision Tech Radeon 5450. The 5450s, anyone can get those. They cost about yeah. two pounds on eBay. Two pounds, <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's the driver situation like for NVIDIA on ARM, Pedro Mateus? Right now, uh, it seems mm. that the driver actually builds. Uh, there were some issues where he had to cross-compile uh, the driver on another machine and then dump it onto the Raspberry Pi. This is like but... saying poo with a bunch of extra <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that was a, 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 for one of the video cards, I'm assuming probably the NVIDIA's. But yeah, mm. he did get them to boot uh, both the Radeons and the NVIDIA's, but they both presented the exact same issue which is when you rebooted with the drivers installed mm -hmm. it would load the kernel module and then the whole system would halt like uh. complete freeze have uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 not, not to crush any dreams on this but uh <laughs> video card on a buy one pcie it's it not works. pretty it works <laughs> there we go it, it it is a it's a curiosity more than it is um, <laughs> i just want them to get it's it to stable. the point where it would yeah just you start the operating system and it would actually give you a picture on screen and you could see it you could run basic stuff not even talking about video games because arm uh but like just basic stuff just get that up and running i want that so I, w I have a very special project in mind for something like that if you're so, if you're mounting yeah. okay you get a full-size video card into that are, are you mounting the pi to the card or the card to the pi a mini itx uh, <laughs> sized video card like that 750 ti that's on the pictures there uh yes and mm. uh put hide the pie in the card <laughs> no one wants to play hide the pie um let's talk about hide the, um, <laughs> hdmi this is the amiga digital ah. video this is going to allow you to add um digital video hdmi to vintage oh as opposed to modern amiga machines come on come on quit, 
<laughs> quit. All right. Well, there's always those attempts to make newer ones. So this is going to be pixel perfect HDMI output and super low latency taking advantage of because the well, it's going to be using Raspberry Pi Zero and the software from RGB to HDMI. That project originally created for the BBC Micro. Now, you, it just takes the signal straight out of the GPIO. Uh, there's a little daughter board you plug in and on the expansion header, and it's done. There it is. Look at it. Aw. So cute. <laughs> so, yeah, no Aww. soldering is required. So, Pedro, you can't do it because you want to solder everything now. <laughs> yes, and, I do. I ran out of the kits now. I need to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is nice because I have um, a VGA converter uh, for my Amiga, but I would like a, <laughs> a, an HDMI one. And actually, Edgy. the advantage to this one over others, there are, are some other HDMI converters on eBay for the Amiga, but the advantage to this one is it's a much cleaner signal. So I, I, I would like to try it, <laughs> definitely with my old Amiga 500. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's definitely doing a decent job playing uh, like an old demo. Um, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, those old Amiga dem demos really shape some of the edge loitiness of uh, people. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, here's, here's what I want to say about that. Um, where, where are you at on like modifying vintage gear and Frankensteining it up to try I'm to make? I'm very much into that. <laughs> You're into it? Yeah, see, yeah. I'm not. Um, I like to keep everything, yeah, pretty much classic. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was put uh, the mini STX motherboards that come in the a ASRock mini A300s um, mm. and put one of them inside the Commodore 64. But now uh, someone uh, from... <sighs> What are they called? I don't remember exactly what the shop is called, but they're actually selling Commodore 64 cases that yeah, support the mini ITX awesome. motherboards. So I kind of lost interest <laughs> in that. <laughs> you just wanted to jerk in everything. Man. You look at that. <laughs> you just look, at, you look at things like, I bet I could shove some electronics in that. Yeah, there I bet I go. could make yeah, a Pedro's really powerful computer out of that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I, I kind of get it. You know, you want to like keep things like, compatible like with this you don't need a special monitor because hey you can use your amiga and plug it in and play with it because that's really all you can do with the stuff but yeah i was just curious where people landed on like it has to be yeah. pristine and you know not upgraded it needs to be 100 percent useless and then no. people that are like no i want to make modifications so i can pretend it's not useless or I want to just make it look like the original, but actually be a functioning functional computer piece of hardware. Yeah. <laughs> Hipsters. Yeah. Well, I like both. You know, my vintage computers, I really do, you know, especially if the ones that are worth a lot of money, I do want to keep them original. I do upgrade them, but only upgrade them to the point as far as they can get upgraded within their own ecosystem. <laughs> I can see the point of that yeah. to a certain extent. It's like, okay, I, I do that with laptops. You buy an old yeah. laptop and you upgrade it as high as it'll go. Yes, I get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, if you want to tell us about your preferences for Frankensteining or not Frankensteining uh, vintage hardware and shoving it full of raspberry pie, how can you go about doing that, Pedro Mateus? Oh, you can do that in a multitude of ways. In fact, if you have some ideas of things, feel free to share them with us. You can shout them on the street, send a carrier pigeon with a teeny tiny little flash drive strapped to its leg. Or, I guess it's far more simpler, uh, if you just go to mm -hmm. um, linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, fill out the form, make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your feedback to. Otherwise, uh, Jordan might misinterpret it as some relationship advice question, or we may consider it hate mail and uh, address it on the Saturday show. So that's your responsibility to pick that adequately. <laughs> that's the right way to do it, man. If you want to get a hold to us, I mean, always you can hop in Discord or IRC. That, that's a valid thing. I can't speak for these two, but I'm not going to have a drawn out conversation with you on Twitter. It's not going to happen. Don't waste your time. I might. Major <laughs> might. Especially if you're being like, arguey. 
Yes. <laughs> if you're being argumentative, I'll Adrian be argumentative like, right back. <laughs> it's just like if it's like part one of three, I'm like, oh, sweetheart, that's not going to happen. Um, Twitter, Twitter's the wrong medium for that. Send me an email so I can look at it and we can send it around. But we need to. Now, um, what's it? Last week or the week before we were talking about the project to allow you to turn anything into a Chromebook? That was last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Croissant project croissant, croissant. <laughs> and uh, a bit surface uh, actually left us a comment on the tubes uh, to ask that's also a way you could get in touch though no promises that we'll actually uh, see it nice show and thanks for the content you provide each week how dare you uh, mm-hmm. i wish you merry christmas from germany ah and I have a question is it possible to try chrome os project croissant chromium os on each uh, notebook or should i have a special device for this I think that is exactly the point of it. You just try Mm -hmm. it on as much hardware as you can get your hands on. Uh, Although if you want to actually install it, uh, then yes, I would recommend having a, at least a specific SSD that you swap in between the different ones to see whether or not it works. Though it is Chromium OS, it it is Linux at its core, but it doesn't have the same kind of interoperability between systems like just a regular distro does so keep that in mind because you might take it from one and move it to the other it doesn't even boot now but then if you do a fresh install it works so so it's <laughs> so, so you can take Very any nice. perfectly functioning linux laptop and nerf it down to a chromebook if you want yes <laughs> uh, if you want to specifically have access to android apps on more powerful hardware than you get on a tablet or any of the currently available Chromebooks? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can web Netflix. kiosk anything. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that will work too. There's a <laughs> way you can get that to work with uh, in the XDA developer forums somewhere. Yeah. Wait, wait. Okay, that doesn't count, so no is the answer. <laughs> It's effectively a no if you want a straightforward answer, but <laughs> it is possible. <laughs> that's the best kind of possible. Um, that's pretty neat. Uh, so it's good to know. You, you just put on anything. Yeah. Let's try it. Uh, Pedro, yep. you get good recommendation. Have fun. Keep, keep a drive. Play it around for it. And just mm-hmm. like plug it in. Play it. Yeah, if it works, like, hey, you're a Chromebook now, little buddy. That'd be great. Uh, that's kind of what I'm going to do with the uh, X240 that I... <laughs> was playing around and it's like okay let's see what that i7 can do as a chromebook yeah <laughs> uh, that's wrong you're supposed to buy the 1200 hundred dollar pixel oh no <laughs> no <laughs> Take an i old do like the four by three screen i i do like that very much it's got you know, a very yeah, nice screen that is beautiful but yes. in google's yeah. defense they supported it for almost two years <laughs> which is you know yes for google that is that, commendable that's extraordinary they didn't even cancel wait they did cancel never mind all right we, we gotta get out of here everybody have a fantastic week and we will Yay. see you next we gotta roll some credits so awesome yes. did i make the credits this time <laughs> let's see <laughs> hey inertia i have a crt a big 21 inch one right in my view <laughs> right next to me <laughs> He was asking earlier <laughs> uh, that's about how, pure how much of a purist get. you have to be. And then yes. you look at their desk. It's like, oh, that's a nice LCD screen you have going on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still have uh, several CRTs I use for testing my old machines and keeping them going. <laughs> Giving them love. <laughs> Aw. Yeah. Thank you to all we- our patrons. Still- <laughs> It's, you know what? It, it is still a question. You know what I don't miss? <laughs> you know what I really like? I like being able to put a, put a computer desk against a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll see you next see week, everyone. CRT. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>